Hello everybody, welcome to my first tutorial here for Stable Diffusion Animation. So first thing we're going to do is of course go ahead and get set up, get all of your notebook loaded, and there's three different kinds of video animation here. For this one there is 2D, Video Input, and Interpolation is actually a new one that I believe just got released last night or possibly the night before. But today all I'm going to focus on is the 2D animation mode and the video input that's like that modifies an existing source video. But we're just going to focus on 2D today. Now let me kind of go down the list here. So the max frames is how many frames you want your animation to be. So for this demo I'm just going to do it at 100 right now. And all I'm going to focus on today is the 2D animation, and I'm just going to get into like the motion parameters, the keyframes, the, which is the movement, and the coherence. And so the keyframes I'll kind of get into at the end, but right now let's look at, at these parameters here. So the angle, what that will do is give kind of a rotation effect to your camera. And also, by the way, if you are familiar with Disco Diffusion, and I've done a lot of tutorials on disco diffusion so this will be old material for you if you are this is exactly the same i believe as it was in the 2d animation on disco diffusion so our zoom parameters are from 0.8 up to 1.25 so anything below a one will be a reverse motion it'll be going backwards in the image and anything above a one will be a forward motion so right now i just kind of have it at a 1.02 and it can, it can go a lot quicker with just small increments because the number is only from 1.0 um, 1 up to 1.25. Well, one's standing still, but anything above one will go forward. So a 1.02 will kind of give us sort of a slow forward crawl. And the X parameters is from negative 10 to 10. And that is the left and right motion. And a positive number will move to the right, a negative to the left. And the Y is the up and down, and a negative number will move the canvas up, I believe, a positive down, well, that might be backwards, actually, but we'll, we'll test that later. Right now, just for this, I'm just going to focus, because this will be a parameter that you can, you can just make a video just kind of zooming forward. So that's what we're going to do for this one. We're just going to make a short video zooming forward at 1.02. And now the coherence here, the previous frame strength, what this does is this makes each frame look more like the last one. So if this is at like 0.1, then each frame, it's going to kind of just generate a bunch of different looking frames. It'll still use the prompt, but it won't keep coherency from image to image. So I've got it fairly high here, and this is something else you don't want too high, because then it'll kind of, if you have it too high, it'll start looking really bad as well. So we'll see how this one does with just 100 frames here. And the noise, this is a new feature. I don't believe this was in Disco, but this will just add some noise to the frame, which is what Diffusion does. It actually takes away pixels to generate the image. So this might help resolve that issue we used to have with Disco, where the, the image would just look really solid after a while because it would kind of run out of noise. So it could it adds some issues. It adds some issues. It wasn't perfect. But let's go ahead and go ahead and run this part now. So we've got 100 frames, 2D mode here, and here's my prompt. I've got a log cabin in a grassy plain by Albert Beardstadt and Ivan Ivazovsky. This is just a prompt that gives a, a fairly realistic looking image. And what we're going to do here, um, I'm not going to, we're not going to go up to 200, so we're just doing 100 frames here. So let me show you some of my other settings here. I am using the Ancestor. You can put this down to this one and that'll speed it up a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on this one for now, though. And basically, though, what you want to do first is kind of come up with a, a prompt that you like and an image that you like, and then just kind of your settings will translate over to animation. So I've got 100 steps, 10 scale, but let's go ahead and run this. And I've got the seed behavior on iteration. Let's go ahead and run this. This will make 100 frames, and I'll come and check on this animation when it is finished. Okay, and there is our animation. I'll go ahead and post a video of it here. Now, if you notice too, it starts off pretty nice and it starts to lose a bit of detail as it goes on. So one thing we're going to do here, I'm going to put the seed. See, I've got the seed here. So this way it's going to render the same thing, but we're going to be able to tell what our changes here are doing. So the first change I'm going to do is to turn this frame, frame strength down a bit to six, because this will keep, this will give us a little more detail. The higher this is, the more it will look like the previous frame, but as the, the 
um, image zooms in, it can start to kind of lose detail because it's keeping too much of the previous frame. So it's not generating enough new information basically for each new frame. So we're going to do that. It was also zooming a little fast. Let's go ahead and turn this down to 1.01. .01, and we're going to go ahead and run this again. You know what, too? I'm going to turn up the max frames. We'll do 150 this time just because that was a bit short. So we're going to go ahead and run the exact same thing here now. We're going to compare the frame strength. We're going to turn that down to 6. And then we're going to turn make it go just a little bit slower. And I'd recommend to kind of learn just to do these forward zoom animations before you start getting into all the changes and everything. But let's go ahead and run this now. And then I'll come back and check on when this is done and load up the video. Okay, and so now if you notice in this video it has more detail, but it's also changing a little more. So that is the trade-off you get when you turn up the frame strength. You will get it more consistent, but it will get a little less detail. So let's kind of get into keyframes here as well, and we'll kind of go ahead and we'll do the, um, I'll show you these other motion parameters as well. So with a keyframe, what you do with a keyframe is it will tell the it'll tell the animation to change something. So whether it's the prompt or the movement. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and have it change the angle at keyframe 50. And that a positive number will give it a clockwise rotation. And then we'll have it stop rotating at keyframe 100. Oops, forgot my colon there. And then at keyframe 100, we're going to have it go back to zero. So it's going to start spinning at keyframe 50. And then what we'll also do here is at keyframe 100, we will have it start going backwards. So we're going to have it go at point, we'll say 0.94. This will just kind of start a slow backwards movement. Actually, let's do that. That'll be that might be a little fast. Let's go ahead and do it just at like 0.96. Okay. And then what we're going to do also, so with like I said, with the keyframes on, you can put in different prompts. So I'm going to have it start changing at keyframe 100 into a futuristic city on an alien planet instead of a log cabin. So this should really give you all the tools you need to make some videos. And you can get really complicated with these. You know, you can make a 500 keyframe movie, have it do all kinds of different changes and zooms and things like that. But let's go ahead now and run this. And this will give you a nice little sample here to start making videos with. Oh, okay, and um, I wanted to point something out too. I didn't actually phrase the rotation quite right how it works. So if you notice right now, the angle is 0.92. So what it actually does is it, it'll it'll um, slowly work its way towards the keyframe numbers. Like right now with the angle at keyframe 50 at one. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna wake, work its way from the angle of zero to the angle of one, starting at frame number one, and it'll slowly get higher and higher until it's at one at 50. Then from keyframe 50 to keyframe 100, it'll work its way from one to zero. So we're, we are on keyframe 50 right now so right now it should be an angle of one right at keyframe 50 which it is see there's the angle one keyframe 50 and now when it gets to keyframe 51 it's going to slowly start working its way back down to zero so that's how the angle works so sorry i didn't quite explain that correctly there so that's how it'll work and so what you can do also like if you wanted to just zoom for a little bit to kind of get around that you can go um keyframe 49 zero like this and then it'll stay at it'll have no zoom no or no angle excuse me no rotation until it hits keyframe 49 then at keyframe 50 it'll start rotating to one and then at keyframe 60 we can just continue with that and have it rotate at one there and then at keyframe 61 go back to zero and I'll kind of explain what this would do, just theoretically, because I'm not running like this. Um, so here, what will happen is from keyframe 0 to 49, it's not going to have any rotation. Then at keyframe 50, it's going to instantly have a rotation of 1, which it'll do up to keyframe 60. So just for 10 frames, it'll spin a little bit. Then at keyframe 61, it'll go back down to 0, and then it'll stay at 0. So that's how you can do things like that if you just want something to do it for a short period of time, but it'll actually, it'll gradually work its way like that to the keyframe. So I just wanted to make sure I explained that right. 
and it's actually kind of doing the same thing here it's starting at um, a zoom speed of 1.02 and then it's working its way down to 0.96 at keyframe 100 so it's actually going to start kind of reversing before we get to keyframe 100 on this one so i just wanted to explain that that's how, that's the way that it works and i'll go ahead and show you the final result here when this is finished okay and this is winding down here now another thing too to get your um images you can use this video i'm not sure how well this works uh the one in disco never works so what i usually do is i'll just download all of my individual frames in the folder and then i'll just import them into my um, movie editor and make a movie from the individual frames but you might be able to use that i'm not sure that like i said the one in disco didn't work this is a good notebook so they probably fixed that as well this probably works now but we'll even do a test of it here in the end here but i want to um do one more here and just to kind of correct um and show you actually how to do those movement changes because i know it's a little confusing if this is the first time you've done it so what i'm going to do this time um this time i'm not going to change i'm just going to leave the angle alone right now We'll put an angle change here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and correct this here first. I'm going to have it stay at 1.02. So like you saw in the last video, it'll incrementally kind of do these movement changes. So right now, it's just going to stay at 1.02 from 0 to 99. Then when it hits keyframe 100, this is going to kind of do what I was what I meant to do last time. I forgot about the incremental changes there. It's going to start going. We're going to have it start going backwards. We'll have it go 0.97, just a little bit faster backwards than it was going forward. And then we're going to go ahead and put that to keyframe 200 as well. Actually, we don't need to. You, you can put since this is the end of the video it's just going to stay at 0.97 until the video is done here basically and then what we're going to do here too for the angle we're going to go ahead and have it stay at that angle zero until keyframe 99 then at keyframe 100 we're going to have it start doing a bit of an angle change just for a little while though we'll have it rotate clockwise a bit let's go ahead and do it a little faster that's a, the other reason too i didn't do a lot of these movement changes in disco is because it could really mess up the video if you move too fast or you know swerve to the right too fast sort of left too fast it would just make your video look like garbage so this hopefully stable can handle these movement changes a little better so this will be kind of cool if it can so i'm going to go ahead and have it do a clockwise spin for about 30 frames we'll just have it do Oops, forgot my colon there. So we'll have it do a clockwise spin as well as start going backwards to keyframe 100 for 30 frames. You can also have it, see I could have a one here and then what would happen is it would, it would start at a fast clockwise spin and then kind of slow down to a one and kind of go slower and slower. We'll just have it do it consistent. Then at keyframe 131, we'll stop the spin and put that back to zero and just let it go there the rest of the frame. And I'll put one more in here just to kind of show you. We'll do um, at one. Let's have it start spinning to the right, turning to the right at keyframe 159. So we're going to keep that at zero. Then at keyframe 160, we'll have it go to the right a little bit. We'll give it a three. These remember the scale is from negative 10 to 10. So you can use a little bit bigger numbers. And then we'll just have that last um, to about keyframe 180. And then 181, we'll stop it. Make sure we get all our punctuation in there. Okay. So this is how it works. So if, if you want um, some movement changes in your video, you got to kind of set it up like this because otherwise it'll increment like if i didn't have this in there this 159 then it would start at zero but incrementally work its way to three so it would slowly start turning to the right from keyframe zero to 160 if that 159 wasn't in there to keep it at a consistent zero up until there so this is how the the keyframe movement works and let's go ahead whoops that's in there let's go ahead and let me just double check this make sure everything looks good yeah, so what this this will do 
is this will keep our forward zoom from keyframe 0 to keyframe 99 at 1.02. At keyframe 100, it will start a backward zoom at 0.97 because that's below 1. Remember, anything below 1, anything negative 1, is a backward zoom. So this will start as going backwards. And then at keyframe 100, it'll start a counter or a clockwise rotation, which will last for 30 frames. And then at keyframe 131, it'll stop the rotation. And then at keyframe 160, it will spin to the right. It'll turn to the right a little bit for 20 frames, and then it will stop again. So let's go ahead and do this one. You know what, too? Let's go ahead and get rid of that seed. We we're kind of done with that. Let's go ahead and get rid of the seed just so we can see something different this time, maybe. So the seed's great for if you want to compare these changes, you know, and do your own studies, things like that, and see what everything does. Use the seed, and then you can see the difference between the two files. Otherwise, if you don't use the seed, then it's going to be changed anyway. It'll just be a little harder to tell. Let's go ahead and run this, and I'll come back when this animation is done. Okay, and our video is winding down here. We're at keyframe 194 out of 200, and it just has the backward zoom now. That um, transition X is ended. It's just going to render five more frames here and be done. And I'm pretty excited. looks like this, this um, stable diffusion is going to be able to handle a lot more movements in videos. So you can really get complex with it. If you see with keyframes, you can have a lot of really complex movements in here. Something I didn't do a lot with Disco, but now we'll have the option to. So this covers the 2D animation mode, and I will cover the video input and interpolation in later videos. Thank you for watching. I'll go ahead and post the video now and go out and make some videos. I'm going to do the same myself here. You all have a great rest of your day.